to Malachi chapter 1, and we're going to continue our study through Malachi, and uh, if you'll look down with me starting in verse 6 tonight, I want you to see here tonight that God, he now turns his attention uh, to the priests, uh, and, 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 and I can tell you, as we read this tonight, as we read over this and study it, I, I can tell you that uh, he's going to address the priest on some of the things that they were doing, and uh, we can learn from them, amen? You know, I, I'm, I've kind of got a doctorate in the school of hard knocks, but I sure like to read about others where I don't make the same mistakes, amen? And uh, they had made some mistakes, and uh, uh, Malachi was going to address those. So down with me in verse 6 tonight, it says this, A son honors his father and a servant his master. If I then be a father, where is my honor? That comes directly from the Lord. Amen. And if I be a master, where is my fear? Where is my reverence? And saith the Lord of hosts unto you, O priest that despise my name. And you say, Wherein have we despised thy name? You offer polluted bread upon my altar, and you say, Wherein have you polluted thee? In that, in that you say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. Notice that word. And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer the lame and sick, is, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor, and will he be pleased with thee, or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts. And now I pray you, beseech God, that he will be gracious unto us. This has been by your means. Will he regard your person, saith the Lord of hosts. Who is this, who is there even among you that would shut the doors for naught? Neither, to be, to, to, neither do you kindle fire on my altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept any, any offering at your hand. For from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles, and in every place incense shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering, for my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. Be, but you have profaned it, in that that the table of the Lord is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even his meat, is contemptible. And you said also, Behold, what a weariness is it, and you have snuffed at it, saith the Lord of hosts. And you have brought that which was torn and lame and the sick. Thus you have brought an offering. Should I accept this on your hand, saith the Lord? But cursed be the deceiver, which hath in his flock a male, and voweth and sacrificed unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful, among the heathen. Let's pray tonight. Lord, we come to you, Lord, and I ask you, Lord, to help me, Lord, to stay focused on you. Stay focused upon your text tonight. And I pray, Lord, that you'll lead me in the spirit and I can preach in the spirit. And Lord, that I won't yield to any kind of flesh as I, as I open up your, your great word tonight. I thank you, Lord, for all those that are here tonight to hear your word. And I pray for a special blessing upon them tonight. I know there's trouble on every, on every seat here tonight. And I pray that you'll attain to every person that's here. And Lord, that you will, you'll minister to every person here. Lord, be it our youth next door. I thank you, Lord, that we can rest our minds that the word of God is being preached. And Lord, that, that they're under good counsel. Lord, we thank you for those that work so diligently. And, and Lord, to have, have such a heart for our youth. But mainly, Lord, they know you and they're mature to help our kids. And Lord, I pray that you be with our children in the back, Lord, as I looked out to be baptized. As, as during the baptism, Lord, I looked out and saw those children sitting on the front. Lord, how they were singing to you and they were praising you. And Lord, as they were studying, uh, Lord, they were studying you tonight and thinking about you. And Lord, I pray that we'll be, we'll, I, I pray that we'll be uh, the church that we need to be to grow champions for Christ through these children. And, Lord, that, that, that your will will be done. And, Lord, we need you on that. So, Lord, you, you take control. And, Lord, we just leave this all to you in, in your hands tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. I want to look at a few things here tonight. I've got, I've got some things wrote down. We, we, need to, let's get, we need to get through a couple of them, amen. But uh, he's addressing the priest tonight. If you look down with me in verse 6 tonight, he says this. 
A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If, I, if then I be a father, where is my honor? And notice what he said, where is my honor? Now he's, he's addressing, he's talking to the priest. And I want you to know he's in the temple. Anybody with me say amen. Now watch, if I be a master, where is my fear, saith the Lord of hosts, and to you, O priest, that despise my name. And, and you say, wherein have we, have we despised our name? Now you notice tonight, he, he says, O priest. When you look in chapter 2 and verse 1, it says, And now, O, o you priest, this commandment is for you. And when you look at chapter 2 and verses 7 and 8, it says, For the priest's lips should, be, should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law of the, of the mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Look at verse 8. But you, are de, but you are departed out of the way, and you have, you have caused many to stumble at the law, and you have corrupted the covenant of Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. So he's talking directly to the priest tonight, and I want you to look at verse 6 tonight because, number one, the priest dishonored the Lord God. Now, that's pretty dangerous territory, and that's pretty, that's pretty hard ground to stand on. Somebody say amen to that. As goes the leader, the shepherd, as goes the flock. I can tell you the leader, the leader sets the pace for the flock. And when God's man does not live a life that is, that is pleasing to the Lord, he is not the right example to the flock. And I can tell you by breaking God's laws, then he, he, so goes the con congregation. When the pastor or the priest uh, uh, lead to, uh, break the laws, then, not, then the church breaks the laws. Anybody home? Look down, turn with me in 1 Peter chapter 5 tonight. I want you to look at a couple of things that we need to look at. Uh, I know there's several preachers in here, and I, I appreciate I appreciate the stand you've made, and I appreciate you a willingness to preach, and uh, God will use you. But I, we need to learn a few things in that. In First Peter chapter five, in verse one, it says this: "The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also for a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed." Now, notice what they no, notice notice what it says in verse two. It says, feed the flock of God. That, that word feed goes to shepherding, teaching. Feed the flock of God, which is among you, taking the oversight or the overseer thereof, not by constraint, not, not begrudgingly, but willingly, not for a, for a filthy liqueur or, or money, but a ready mind. That's what God expects out of a pastor. That's what God expects out of a priest. And I can tell you tonight, I've never been a priest, but I've been a pastor. And I tell you, you better be living out the. You better be living out what you're preaching, or it won't work. I just go ahead and tell you, it won't work. And it tells us neither being in verse three, neither neither is being lords lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. You know, so I, you see here, there's already a problem with the priest because they weren't examples to the flock; they were a bad example to the flock. And, 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 and you see this tonight, and you, and you see how important it is. I want you to turn back to our text tonight and look down in verse 6. He says, A son honors his father and a servant his master. If I then be a father, where is my honor? He, he says, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Where is the reverence for him? I tell you, I reverence the Lord Jesus Christ. I reverence the pulpit. I reverence the call of God. I don't take that lightly, church. And that's not something that I think a pastor ought to take lightly, a pastor or teacher ought to take lightly because God has, has put in our hands the word of God to preach to, to a lost and dying world and it's to grow the congregation. So as you look at tonight, he says, he says, and if I be a master, where is my fear, saith the Lord of hosts unto you, O priest that despise my name. That's, that's, a, pretty tall, that's a pretty tall accusation. And it came from the Lord. He said, O priest that despise my name, and say, Wherein have you despised my name? Notice that word, wherein, because it's a pointing out the error of their way when he says, Wherein. So as you're looking at that tonight, well, I want you to know that, that we as pastors and teachers and those that, that have accepted the call of God, we ought, we ought not just be hearers of the word, we need to be preachers of the word. Amen. And we're to, we're to feed the flock of God. 
And it should be in our DNA. We should be examples to the flock. Now, I want you to see something here. He says, O priest that despised my name. And you say, wherein have we despised thy name? They said that in an arrogant way. That wasn't a question like they wanted to know. Where have we, disp- ha- ha- have we done that? Have we despised your name? It's arrogant. I want to tell you something. There is no arrogancy. There is no arrogancy that's good in ministry. I'll just go ahead and tell you. So, so they, they, they answer that towards the Lord. I'm going to tell you something. The Lord, if the Lord said, said I, I have dishonored his name, I ain't saying nothing, but I'm sorry. Amen? And I'm getting on, I'm getting on my face. I'm not going to argue with him about it. He's God. Amen? So the priest dishonored the Lord God. And I want you to see the second thing tonight. The priest brought polluted bread. And look down with me in verse 7, and it says, you, you offer polluted bread upon my altar, and you say, wherein have, have we polluted thee? In that you say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. Notice that word. Bread means, right here, when you see the word bread, I want you to put this in your margin. That means food. That means food and refers to the sacrifices that are provided by the law of Moses in Leviticus chapters 1 through 7. In the tabernacle also there was the showbread. And on top of the table was a crown which went around the showbread. The showbread, this represented the bread of his presence. Not only was they bringing polluted bread, they were bringing polluted meat upon his altar. And it also represents this this bread of presence that, that was on top of the table. It also meant in the future, it represents Jesus, the bread of life. But they, but, but, but they brought, what they brought was polluted. And he called it, he's, and they put it on my altar is what Jesus said. It's what the God said, amen? My altar. So in verse 7 he said, you, you, you offer polluted bread upon my altar. And wherein you have polluted thee, in that you say the table of the Lord is contemptible. I want you to notice that word tonight. The table of the Lord, that, it, that's, that table of the Lord is also the altar of sacrifices. You might want to put that down in your margin, what that is. And it says the table of the Lord is contemptible. What, what does that mean? That means despised. The feeling one has towards someone considers low. You can see this in the priest's arrogance. They, they, they looked at the table, they looked at the, at the altar of sacrifice as worthless, evil, and to be despised. Also, the word contemptible comes from the word scorned. So they presented defiled food. Contemptible. By bringing polluted sacrifices to God's altars, they are saying his altar is worthless. That's what they're saying, church. You know, that's pretty pretty tough, isn't it? After all, these blood sacrifices represented the blood that will be shed one day by the Messiah that was to come, and he came. John 1, 29, John the Baptist said the next day, Jesus, he sees Jesus coming. He said, he said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's what that represented, amen? Hebrews 10, verses 1 through 14 tells us how important the blood of the Lamb is and how, how the blood of the Lamb of God is. So I want you to know the priest brought polluted bread upon his altar, and it's his altar. You know, I, I probably a little bit overboard on things, but I I, I, believe, I just believe this is God's pulpit. I do. I, I I believe I believe this is God's pulpit, and I believe I believe whoever stands in this pulpit, he's going to have to be a man that that is proven of God. I just go ahead and tell you. I don't just. I've, I've had a lot of people. Get, well, when can I come preach at your church? And I'm thinking, mm-hmm. I know what they believe. I don't want to undo a mess. I want to tell you something. Men that stand in this pulpit are going to be, they're going to be accountable. They're going to be godly men that are approved. Amen? Amen. But I want you to know tonight that these, these priests that brought polluted bread, I want you to see the third thing tonight. These, these priests were leading God's people in the wrong way totally. That's where it gets tough, church. He said, and if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? Now, God's talking to him through Malachi. 
If you offer the blind for a sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer now unto thy governor, and will he be pleased with thee, or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts. Now see, the governor wasn't over God. God was over the governor. And, and the priests were giving the Lord less than their best. I want you to notice where they were. They were in the temple. That's sobering. According to Levitical law in Le Leviticus 22, 20, uh, it, they, they could not allow or bring a lame sacrifice to be sacrificed. It would not be accepted by the Lord. But these priests were allowing the people to bring them. Why did they do that? Well, the priests and their families could eat the meat of the sacrifices. It was a time of high taxes. It was, a high, it was a time of high unemployment. It was a bad economy and money was scarce. So the priests would settle for less than their best just to be able to feed their family. There's nothing good about that church. And in verse 8, he tells us, he, said, he tells us, he says, he says, Offer it now until you govern. Will he be pleased with you or accept thy person, except the Lord of hosts? What would the governor? I'll tell you, the governor would run him off. And he would not be pleased. You know, I just wonder how much we give of our best to something else besides the Lord each and every day that we, don't, we overlook. Have you ever thought about that? I mean, somebody says, hey, the governor's coming. They'll get, they'll get an entourage of people together and they'll have, they'll have a bodyguards all around and he'll walk in and, 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 and he, you know, they treat him like he's somebody because he's a governor and that's a good thing. But what if God rolled up? What if Jesus rolled up? How would we treat him? I wonder if he walked in today, would we accept him in our churches today? Think about that. But, but church, God is over everything. He's to be praised. He's to be worshipped. He's, he's to be feared. There's nothing wrong with the word feared. It, it, carries a, it carries a healthy meaning of fear, but it's a healthy meaning of reverence too to who God is. God's God. He's big. Amen? And he's to be adored and he's to be blessed and he's to be praised. And these priests wasn't doing their job and, and getting out across to the people. Matter of fact, they were just kind of taking in. They wasn't on the giving end. Anybody home say amen. I want you to know one thing. God's above our governor. I'll just go ahead and tell you. Number four. God told the priests it's better if they just shut the doors of the temple as defiled his altar. Man, is that not tough? Look down with me in verse 10 tonight. He says, who, who, who is there even among you that would shut the doors for nothing? Neither do you kindle fire on mine altar. Notice he called it my, mine altar. It wasn't their altar, it was his altar. For, for he, says, he said, neither do you kindle fire on my altar for nothing. I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of hosts, neither will I accept an offering at your hand. That's pretty tough. You know, and Malachi is giving this out. He, he, he's telling them, and, and, and he tells them, is there, in, in verse 10, he says, he, said, he says, I have no pleasure in you. He leads off by saying, is there any among you who will shut the doors? Shut the doors of the church. You know, I just wonder today. I just wonder today. If God told them to shut the doors of the church, if they would even know it was God talking to them. He says, I have no pleasure in you, neither will I accept your offering. You know, today, today, we, we, we don't do spiritual sacrifices like they did back then, but our bodies is a spiritual sacrifice. Over in Romans chapter 12, and, and you can turn where if you want to, in verse 1 it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, your bodies a living sacrifice. That's not just the bodily, it's, it's you. He presents your bodies a living sacrifice, holy. That's set apart from the world. Do you understand that, church? 
He says, he said, your body's babes a living sacrifice. We're not a dead sacrifice. We're a living sacrifice to the Lord. And part of that is being holy, separated, and set apart from the world. And be a, and, and, and a living sacrifice. I like this part, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, your logical service. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed. That word transformed comes from the a word that we use for metamorphosis. You know, the transformation does happen quick on the salvation, but I tell you, there's a transformation going on even during the sanctification process, isn't it? He says, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. How are we renewed in our mind? We're to be your... We, we are to be renewed in our mind every day through the word of God. That you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I just wonder if you really realize today that our bodies, our bodies is, are the temple of the Holy Spirit of God. And we're to take care of our bodies that houses the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? I'm sure glad I got the Holy Spirit. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I want to tell you something. We have power, church. Now, now, listen, when Jesus came into my heart, he kicked that little old brat. He almost kicked him plumb out. But we got this old Adam body, don't we? Sometimes there's a battle going on. There's sometimes I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you, I know y'all don't ever sin, but I do. I have to pray up before I drive somewhere. Amen. I mean, you know, driving down Dick Casper Bypass 35 mile an hour, that's got to be a sin. <laughs> Amen? Because I got to get from Mayfield to Murray before a certain time. Amen? How can you drive 35 mile an hour down Dick, Pass, Dick Caspin Bypass? Amen? There's never a place to pass, ever. So I've, I, I, I've determined I'm just not going to get mad anymore. I'm just going to drive 35 with them. Right. Amen. <laughs> and you know, I'm going to walk in the Spirit. I'm gonna, God's in control. He's sovereign. He's in control. We can trust Him. I'm going to show up when I'm supposed to show up. Right. Amen. Right. And I have to talk to my, I have to give my flesh a little motivational speech on that sometimes. <laughs> Amen. That little brat. Thank God I got the Holy Spirit to help me with that. He's our helper. He's our comforter. He's our guide. Amen. Amen. But we should give God our best. We should give God our best in worship. Worship can't be secondary. It's got to be first. I walk around, shake hands. I'm about half under conviction because I'm talking at the same time. I need to be, I need to be singing at the same time. I don't know how I'm going to do that because I can't sing. But I want to tell you something, church. God wants the best of our time. He don't want seconds in your time. He, he don't want seconds in our worship. He don't want seconds in our giving. He wants first because he is Lord. Amen. Everything we do is an act of worship towards him. How we view him is an act of worship towards him. And I never want to say, hey, I never want to hear that. I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of hosts, nearly will I accept an offering at your hand. If our bodies are a living sacrifice, if we're a living sacrifice to the Lord, would there be times that we could that could be said. We need to think about that. Where we carry the Holy... Listen, the Holy Spirit of God, if you're sealed by the Holy Spirit of God, it tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 22, 23, that we're sealed in our hearts. So wherever we go, the Holy Spirit is in our hearts. Then we're, where are you taking Him? What, are you, what kind of situation are you taking Him into? Is it darkness? 
Back before I saved, I didn't think nothing about pulling up to a drive through drive up window and, 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 and buying some liquor. I didn't think anything about it. I was doing it at Paducah. Nobody knew me. Pulled up there one night as my cousin. I look back, I'm thinking, God, I'm sure glad you saved me. And I sure hope he sees a change in me. But he can't say it because I ain't never been back. I watch where I take the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? Our reasonable service is a holy sacrifice to the Lord. Are y'all getting this? And pastors are even higher accountable. Preachers are higher accountable to that. I want you to know that the priests were practicing hypocrisy and it was better for them to shut the doors than bring that half-hearted sacrifice and half-hearted worship to the Lord. They, they brought less than their best. Y'all with me tonight? Say amen. amen. Number five, verse 11. Here's, here's the fifth one. Malachi looks ahead to the message going to the Gentiles. I want to tell you something. You got to realize this is the last message in the Old Testament. There's 400 years of silence coming. Amen? Till one steps up on the scene named John the Baptist had the spirit of Elijah. And he's going to be the forerunner for Christ. And he even talks about that in the, in, it right here in this passage of Scripture over in chapter 4. But I want you to know tonight that, that, that Malachi looks ahead. He looks ahead to the message of going, of sending to the Gentiles. Look at verse 11. For from the rising of the sun, even to the going down of the same day, my name, this is God, my name, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. And, and every place incense shall be offered unto my name. And a pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. God has left his people here. Is that not dangerous? He has left his people here. Here he's left his people because they will not serve or worship him. And they, when they do, it's out of half-heartedness. And not out of a heart of love. You know, Peter will take the gospel to the Gentile nation in Acts chapter 10. Jesus saved Saul on the road to Damascus. And he called him to be an apostle to the Gentiles and his name became Paul in Acts chapter 9. In Romans chapter 11, the Gentiles were grafted in. Were grafted in and God takes the gospel to the Gentiles to provoke Israel for jealousy so they'll receive his gospel and his son, Jesus Christ the Messiah, but they didn't. Malachi delivers this message to the nation of Israel and then God goes, to, goes silent for 400 years. I want you to see to something tonight in, in Malachi chapter 4. Verses 5 and 6, I just mentioned this. Behold, I will send Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers of the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. John the Baptist. Boy, was he a boy. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. And here we are today. Here we are today, the Gentile nation saved by God's grace. And we got a voice for him any time that, we can, that we, can, we can take opportunity to do so. But I'm afraid we're just too half-hearted to do that. I don't think, I don't think hey, I've seen these things. that You ever see these shirts that says, Mama Bear? This is yes. Mama Bear. What does that mean? It means, hey, don't mess with my kids. Don't mess with my family. Don't mess with my kids. Amen. Because all Christianity goes to the side. I'm going to be a mama bear. That ain't God's way. God's way is to do it His way. Amen. We're a living sacrifice to Him. Have you all thought about that? Oh, I don't mess with my kids. Hey, your kids are not that good. <laughs> Mine weren't. Got a phone call from our neighbor one night. Uh, Cindy, uh, 
was John Kyle and some friends out the other night. So and so. Yeah, they were camping out, but that, but but they were over here. They, they they were at our house. Well, I'm pretty sure I heard his voice, and somebody threw some eggs, and it just sounded like his voice. Like, she got for hey, my son. John Kyle, come here. What did y'all do the other night? Oh, we just ran around the farm. Liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> Cornered him up. He said, yeah, I did it. That was the greatest lesson he ever learned. You know it's okay to whip your child? Do you know that? You don't beat your child. It's okay. To, it's okay to whip him. John Kyle had a John Kyle had a switch. It's kind of like a light switch. You had to hit it here where it come on here. <laughs> the receptacle was down here. You know what I'm talking about, Erica? And you had to hit it just right. Sometimes you didn't get it. Then the next thing, you had to hit it again. Then all of a sudden, you got it. Your kids ain't that smart. Your kids ain't that good. Amen? They're good kids, but sometimes they're just not that good. I had a knock at the door when I was a kid. Merle Fitzgerald comes down and says, uh, Jim, some, some boys the other night in our neighborhood, they egged our ball go. Would, any, would you know anything about that? Dad's in the door. Keith! Never Tim or Russ. Yeah. Did you egg the Fitzgerald's ball go? No, Barry did it. <laughs> no, I did it. I had to go paint his ball go. We're just not that good sometimes. Amen? And church, I, I want you to know that <coughs> We need to raise our kids right. We do. I'm glad my dad, I'm glad my dad, dad disciplined me over that. And I'm glad I had to go apologize to them. I'm glad I had to go paint that ball go. Because I would have never learned. Number six tonight. Let's close down. Malachi reprimands the priest for allowing the people to cheat on their vows to the Lord. You ever thought about your vows to the Lord? When you go to verses 12 and 13, it talks a lot about that. Let me back up. Let me back up to verse 11. It says, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast any more fruit before her time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. He was talking about, he was talking about verse 10. Now, wait a minute. I'm in the wrong chapter. It's all right. Somebody say Amen. Verse 12, here we go. Verse, chapter 1, verse 12. But you have profaned, you have profaned it. It means they defiled it, they polluted it. In that you say the table of the Lord is polluted and the fruit thereof, even his meat is contemptible. Notice that. In verse 13, you, you said also, behold, what a weariness is it and you have snuffed at it, saith the Lord of hosts, and you have brought that which is torn and lame and, that, and the sick Thus you have brought an offering. Should I accept this at your hand, of your hand, saith the Lord of hosts. So I want you to see those two verses. So here Malachi, is, he reprimands the priest here for allowing them to cheat on their vows to the Lord. Now, now, now in, verse, in verses 12 and 13, when they brought a sacrifice that was torn, lame, and sick, it, it, and, and you look down in, in verse 14, it says, be cursed and be deceived, be, be cursed, but but cursed be the deceiver which hath hit in his flock a male and voweth and sacrificeth to the Lord a correct thing. What's he talking about? He's got, he, he brings an old sick animal to the Lord and he's got a perfect one back at home. That's what he's talking about. He says, cursed is that vow. Cursed is that vow. And he tells him, he says, he says, for I, he said, for I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. So, so he, 
He tells them as he looks at this tonight that everything torn, everything that's lame, everything that's sick, it, it, and you call it an offering, it, and it's not healthy, and the Lord had hey, health, the Lord, he, he wants a healthy animal, an unblemished animal, a perfect animal to be sacrificed, and they brought their old junk in. And even during that time, they didn't even have to do that. That was a voluntary thing. They would do that voluntarily just to show their, their, their love towards the Lord, but they were bringing junk in. I mean, that's pretty bad when you, when you don't have to do something, but what you bring in is the worst that you got to the Lord. Kind of reminds me of Acts chapter 5 on... Ananias and Sapphira. When they lied to the Holy Spirit. And you and you look at that and you 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 think you think, should the Lord accept this? The priest did. But once a sacrifice was presented, I want you to hear this. Then the vow was made to the Lord, and then it becomes binding. In Leviticus chapter 27 and Numbers chapter 30, it becomes binding, even if it's voluntary. Deuteronomy chapter 23 gives us just a little insight on that in verses, uh, in verses 21 through 23. It says, when thou, thou, when thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it. For the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee, and it shall be sin in thee. But if thou shalt forbear to vow, it shall, it shall be no sin in thee, which that which is gone out of the lips that thou shalt keep and perform. Even a free will offering according to, to thou hast vowed unto the Lord thy God, which thou hast promised with thy mouth. Once you give it to the Lord, once you vow it, once you present it, then it's a vow to the Lord. I remember one time, I remember when, when God saved me and he called me to preach all at the same time. I told him during that time, I said, if the phone rings, I'm going to go. I already knew he called me to preach. I didn't know how you did that. I didn't know how you got started, but I told him if the phone rings, I'm going to go. Well, the phone rang the other day, about, well, I say the other day, a few weeks ago. A guy called me to do a revival. And I said, let me get back with you. And uh, let me check my date and I'll get back with you. Well, I, I'm thinking, I really don't want to do that revival. That don't, that don't sound like a preacher, does it? Then the Lord reminded me, remember? Remember? When the phone rings, I'm going to, he called you. I called that guy back quick as I could. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do it. You know, when you make a vow to the Lord, Lord, if you, it, it's, it's binding. Amen? I mean, we don't think about those things. I mean, but, but listen, if you, if, if, you, if you promised the Lord something you didn't do, you need, you need to apologize to him. Amen? You need to confess it to him and repent of it. Because it's serious to the Lord. Oh, Lord, if you just get me out of this situation, I'll do that. I'll serve you forever, and then you can't even find them. That's pretty serious. Amen? Amen. Let me show you one more thing. Can y'all handle one more? God will bring glory to himself. Look down, look down with me. Go back, go back with me. Go back with me to verse 5. And your eyes shall see. And you shall say the Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. Let me tell you something. God was magnified from the border of Israel because I preached on that this morning. They could look at Edom and knew how blessed they were. But listen, there was a remnant of people that loved the Lord and they brought him perfect sacrifices every time. God's always got his remnant. Amen. God's always got his remnant. God's going to be glorified. He's got his people. Sometimes they're overshadowed by all the chaos that goes wrong, especially with, with priests. 
I'm going to say preachers that weren't doing their job. But there's always a remnant that brings honor and glory to the Lord. I think we've got a pretty good remnant here. Amen? Amen. Church, if there's anything I want us to learn tonight, we need to take God's ministry serious. We need to take God's worship serious. I've been, um, I've been talking to Bobby about, hey, we need, we need to get Sunday night strong as Sunday morning. Matter of fact, we need to get Sunday morning stronger in worship. We need to get Sunday night stronger. We need to worship the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm serious about this. Now, I'm not going to go back on it. I believe we need to worship the Lord, thy God, with all of our heart, soul, and mind. I, I, I believe God wants us to bless his great name. Amen. I'm going to preach the word. I'm going to bring my A game. I'm going to do the best I can for what little I got. But we got to bring the best we are to the Lord to worship him. We need to bring our best every time. People, I, I, I ask people to come preach. I ask Greg Hill to come preach. You know what? He, he come in that night and he had a suit on. And I'm thinking, how did he know to wear a suit? I, wouldn't, I, I didn't care if he wore a suit or not. I wear a suit because it's the Sabbath day. It's the day of the, I know Sabbath day, it's not really a Sabbath day, it's the, it's the Lord's day. I understand that. But I reverence the call. And Sundays is the Lord's day. And I, I just reverence that. I can't explain that. I, I just believe I need to set the right tone on that as a pastor. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me in the pulpit. Y'all with me? Y'all all look nice. And you look, you're always nice. You always look nice. I'm talking about me. I'm going to bring my A game. I'm going to give the best I got where God can be glorified. Bobby's got to be, he's got to bring the best he's got. Clint Reed has got to bring the best he's got. Daniel Catlin has got to bring the best he's got. All these at least, you got to bring the best you got. Sunday school teachers, you got to bring the best you got. You can't be flippant on trying to teach, trying to get a lesson together at 10 o'clock on Saturday night. It don't work. You got to be serious about this. Be serious about God has trusted. Where, have you ever seen so many kids? Had 70 kids back there. Okay, it was 69. It's 70 for a preacher. 69 kids back there. Just kids, not including workers. Now, God has trusted us with children, God's trusted us with youth. But we can't take it. Hey, we don't need to bring seconds. We don't need to bring thirds. We need to bring A pluses. We don't need to bring 100%. We need to bring 125%. That's the way I roll. I bring it all. Amen? I go for the fence every time. I go for the goalpost. And that's what we all need to do. Hey, listen. God wants our best. Some of you say, I've heard people, hey, you're going to have to slow down a little bit. I'd rather wear out as rust out for the Lord. Amen? I, I've kind of learned how to balance things out pretty good. Don't say nothing. I feel like I have. I've kind of balanced that out. I'm, I'm getting better. I'm trying to balance it out better with my wife and my, my kids and my family. I'm really trying to balance that out. And it's, it, it's, it's kind of a tight rope. You've got to walk. But it's a good thing. Because I, I want to take care of all of it. I want to take care of the Lord. His His it's all his. I won't take care of all of it. I take it serious. Church, we need to take it serious. Amen. Don't bring your seconds. Let's bring our first. Lord, we come to you tonight thanking you for your kindness and goodness. And Lord, 